This is an Israelite Jewels recording. The Book of Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmothers Chapter 4 An account of Ada, the second grandmother, in her captivity by Lamech, and her joining for the Lord, and of the Lord's instructions concerning the nature of forgiveness. After seeing all these things, I once again went with scribes to look with Urim, and my thoughts went back to my view of Rishuya, and I had been very interested to know more about the prophecy, that this little son would be foremost in the land of Qatar to establish righteousness. And his name means, the one who is prominent to establish holy worship. And I watched him. And he did not go, when everyone left to bury Micah, but he lingered behind at the pool of heaven. And he was drawn in his heart, to the presence of the Lord, there, in the midst of his grief. And it came to pass, that Rishuia fasted, and prayed there for some days. And on the seventh day, he dreamed a dream. And in his dream, he heard the host of the Irkod Shoi singing, and praising Matsa the Lamb for the rich happiness, that was now in the heart of Anokhized, because of the discovery of the pool of heaven. And when he awoke, he praised the Lord, and drank from the pool. And when he did so, a new spirit of life entered into him, and he was born anew in his soul. And the Lord spoke to him, and said, It is my desire, that you establish a holy covenant, to be entered into, year by year after the harvest, so that all the righteous who gather here at the pool of heaven, can be taught from on high, and for them, to covenant, to love me, with all their hearts, and souls, and to do that which will bless them in their families. And this must be done, because dedication, and intelligence, is the pathway to holiness, so that purposeful virtue, and stability, can pass from one generation, to another. And learning the ways of a no can join the people to that which gives life, and confidence, in the face of adversity. And loving him, according to all the ways of the covenant, will safeguard their joys, in their gift of life. And when I heard this, I knew that Rishuya was the first upon the earth to establish the covenant of love, and also education, and formal learning. And with the passing of time, the guidance tablet came to be taught at the pool of heaven. And I saw that Mahal, because of the grace of Kanan, taught Rishuya, the meaning of forgiveness, which he had learned from his grandmother Kava. And at an early age, Rishuya, because of his vision, established firmly what he was taught by Mahal, at the pool of heaven. And it came to pass, that Rishuya urged upon the people to come every year after the harvest to gather at the pool of heaven and, all of those who chose, entered into a covenant, to love Anokhized. And the people hearkened to Rishuya. Because of the prophecies of them old father Micah, and all of the righteous, began to be of one heart, and mind, in their views of the knowledge of Anokhized. And my heart was filled, to see this young man, and his vision of created purpose. And as I thought upon these things, I began to remember what the Lord had said to me about the wife of Rishuya. And the Urim worked before my eyes, and I began to see a young maiden from the north country, near the borders of Helia. And she was instructed by the Lord, in how to be able to flee away, from the wickedness there. And she followed the guidance of the Spirit, and made her way to Qatar. And the people of the encampment of Micah, took her in. And she was found by them, to be in need, for she had traveled many days alone without provision. But she was not dismayed, being buoyed up by her faith. And her name was Aku. And her parents, were good people who lived under the domination of one of the masters of Seku. And when they heard her account of what the Lord was urging her to do, they aided her in her ability to escape into a place of safety. And she was of the lineage of Kenna. And her parents had named her after Kenna, for the names Kenna, and Aku both mean a sweet reed. And when I considered this, I was amazed, that any among the righteous, would name their little daughter after a man who was a vagabond in the earth, because he had fled for the shame of killing his brother and he had been seen by hardly any man. And many stories, arose concerning him. And I said, Lord, 
I have never been exposed to view forgiveness and compassion in such a remarkable way. And I began to be aware of a trait in the lives of the ancients that I think has never been known. And it was clear to me that in the naming of their daughter, the parents of Aku were openly expressing compassion and understanding. For a man whose life had turned tragic. And Kenna was the ancestor of Aku. And all the people knew that he was the only human soul born in Eden. And such knowledge gave rise to great compassion for him. Now, it came to pass, that the people of Micah, gathered at the pool of heaven, and they brought Aku with them. And she was small in stature. And she was beautiful, with a radiant smile. And in those days, she and Rishuya fell in love together, as the people were gathered at the pool of heaven. And the place was very special to them, ever after. And in the course of time, they were married, and they named their two daughters after the pool of heaven. And it can be seen to be a certainty that Aku was his rib. Because she is very skilled at teaching, and learning righteousness among the women. And the contrast between righteousness, and wickedness, was very clear to her because of her experience in Helia. And she could eloquently describe the value of holiness, and reveal many delightful things about the joys of forgiveness. And in this way, little Aku, who was as a sweet reed, began to find the meaning of sustaining holiness, and undergirding the authority of Elda. And because Rishuya was a descendant of Chadan, they had a wedding after the manner of the worship at the rocks of Simca in Eden. And upon viewing all these things, I felt a tender feeling well up in my heart. For here, before me, was the answer to the promise of the Lord, to gather at the rock of Ariel when he said, he would measure out a measure of grace for little Kenna. And I know that the Lord is aware of the forces that were against him because of the circumstances of his little life with the first sin in Eden. And the Lord extended his grace to him, because he knew that evil forces desired him to be one with them, because he was the only man to be born in Eden. And Kenna had the disadvantage of being subject to the unrestrained forces there. And now before me, I see one of his offspring, joining in marriage with a holy man of Abera, albeit those who established righteousness in Qatar did not know of this order of service at this time. And Aku would be the mother of Baraka, who is the mother of Enoch, the seventh, from Yatsgod. And so we see, that a part of that measure of grace came in the form that a descendant of Kenna, was the grandmother of Enoch who walked with Anokhizd. And I see that the brother of Mahuja, named Azri, would marry the sister of Baraka named Shemanadab, who was the mother of Ada, who was stolen away on the day of her wedding. And Ada, at her birth, was named Aku after her grandmother, but she began to be called Ada, after she was carried away. And I see that Azri, and Shemanadab, lived in the northern parts of Anak. And Azri was always helpful, and faithful to his duties, to his family, and in his service to the Lord. And in this family, it can be seen that they are all very bonded together, as two brothers married two sisters. And Enoch, and Ada, were bonded doubly in their family. And this bonding, grew out of the joining of Rishuya, and Mahal, in deep friendship, and in their service to the Lord. And it is plain to see, that Baraka took after her father, for more than any other woman, she established profound righteousness. And it was she who first heard, the Lord in regards to the Urim, and many other elements of worship by which she blessed her people, and Anokhizd. And it came to pass, that after these things, I began to see the wedding of Nam, and Aku, who was later called Ada. And it was during the feast. And I looked with interest, because I had seen this matter before with Urim. And I watched, for what further I might learn. And I must confess, I was a little interested, so I could see if I had gotten it right the first time. And I could discern that Lamech, the seventh from Yatsgod, came to the wedding with a careful plan. And, he was a master of, the secret society of Seku, which is to say, the secret society of the knife, and his intent, was to empower himself over his fellows. And in order, 
for him to accomplish his designs in wickedness, it could only be accomplished if he obtained a maiden pure, and fair, who belonged to another. And it all had to be done, in secret from his fellows. And it was, for this reason, he had traveled to attend this event that was unknown to his people, for the people of Lamech, did not have weddings. And he came intending to steal a maiden to pursue his evil purposes. And he had uttered dark sentences, using the element of wickedness in his preparation for this matter, in order to safeguard the success of his undertaking. And under a pretense of anger, he went out from the meal. And I saw him lay hold of Aku, when she was apart from the others. And he restrained her, so she could make no noise, but I saw that she straggled against him. And he bound her with cords, and tied a covering over her mouth. And a maiden saw them as they went into the darkness of the night. And she set up a cry. And Lamech travelled for most of the night. And I saw him, when he came to a cave, where he thought he would be safe from pursuit, and he threw Aku down, with her face in the sand. And she could not move. And in her heart, she called out to Matzah the lamb to come, and help her. And by, and by, Lamech went to sleep. And it came to pass, later that night in the cave, Aku felt a gentle touch, and hands loosened her bond, and gently cleaned the sand from her face, with a cool wet cloth. And when she could look, it was Matza the lamb. And he spoke softly to her. And he said, L. am sorry you are treated in such a hard manner. My heart breathes with you. And his presence was healing indeed, and it cast away all fear, and dismay. And the Lord said, If you may, it becomes the children of Anokis to forgive their fellows. For if you will forgive this man for all he has done to you, it will be a great help for me. And it will thwart the plans of the forces of evil, which are meant to change the course of many things, much to the sorrow of my father Anokis. And I have need of you to be forgiving, and to endure long suffering for me. And in the end, you will be richly blessed and a multitude of peoples in the earth, will find salvation, if you can continually find your way to forgive him. And upon hearing, and seeing these things, I was astonished. And the Lord said, Further, I would deliver you now, if you desire it of me. But, if you will forgive him, you will bring that spirit of forgiveness to a new land, and there, you will have children, from whom righteousness will ensue to change, the course of the earth. And in due time, I will restore you back to your rightful husband Nam. Now, I must say, that upon seeing these things, I was completely taken aback. And I wondered if I was seeing, and hearing all this in error. And I asked the Lord, to please forgive me, and the Spirit immediately brought back to my mind, my resolve to allow the Lord to give us his view of things. So, I continued to look. And I saw Aku looking steadfastly upon the Lord. And her love for the Lord, was very strong. And this was not her first personal visit from him. And she softly answered him and said, Whatever, you want of me Lord, I will do it. And her eyes looked upon him with deep compassion. And the image of his kindness, never left her soul, during all her days. And I saw in her a faith, and a strength. I had not seen before in any person. So with this, I decided to be patient, and continue to look. And in my heart, I began to marvel at a new understanding of forgiveness. And I began to inquire diligently of the Lord, to help me know more completely, the meaning of this amazing request for forgiveness. And the Spirit, brought to my mind, that Yat's God had also asked her husband Nam, to forgive Lamech and it can be seen, that it was indeed known, that she was delivered back to her husband to have a happy life, because he also forgave Lamech. And she went on to have a son in the encampments of Nod, who was the lead listener, when Matzah came to instruct Enoch in his personal counsel, concerning the sanctity of marriage. And the name of her son by Nam, is Zakar, which means, the man who remembers. And I am sure, he long remembered what happened to his parents on their wedding day, in regard to the sanctity of marriage. And the Lord reminded me, that he himself, 
is willing to forgive, even the unforgivable sin, but he is unable to, because of the use of the element of wickedness which cuts off the way back to his father. And I also had it fresh in my mind, the knowledge of how, because of forgiveness, Aku was named after Kenna who had killed his brother. And I began to look intently, to learn all I could about forgiveness. And the Spirit touched my heart with wisdom, while viewing with Urim. And it was made known to me, that from before the time of Ada, starting with our first parents, the concept of forgiveness was thought to only apply to a no keys in his love for his children. But with this infinite forgiveness by Ada, for such a wicked act, she was able to establish that all the children of men, must, also forgive one another, especially among the righteous. And this is the desire of Matzah. And her example was so startling, that listeners spread the news of it, far and wide. And in the days following, there were many inquiries, as to what it meant for people to forgive one another, and how it could be accomplished. And in these things, the spirit of rich forgiveness, spread abroad among all the righteous in Qatar, and back into mine. And it came to pass, that when it was light, Lamech awoke, and he emerged out of the cave, and, he looked about, to see if they had been followed, and when he went back inside, he saw Ada sitting there unbound. And he was alarmed, and he said, Why did you not flee? And she answered, Not a word. And I knew, he was a hunter, and a traveler, and he would have tracked her down. And Lamech examined everything. But there was no sign, that she was helped. And he was perplexed, as to how she came to be free of her bonds. But when he was satisfied, they were not followed, he relaxed, and his mind was eased. Now this uncertainty was upon him, because of his many superstitions. And he knew the people of Nam in Nod were not travelers. And Lamech looked about, and pondered whether to once again bind Ada. And she said quietly, I will go with you. And I saw that Lamech was prideful, and lifted up, and he said in his heart, No woman can resist me. And he was glad to not have the burden of carrying her. And in all this, I had not known such a power of forgiveness before, and I desired to know more. So, I left off from viewing with Urim for some days, because I worried that I was amiss in this matter. And it came to pass, that after a while, the Spirit of the Lord came to me gently, and said that if I would look with Urim again, he would bring me new understanding. So, I called the scribes together, and I asked the Lord to bless us with a knowledge of these things. And we assembled before the altar of the Lord. And I prayed, and said, Lord, we are come here this day, to ask you to reveal to us, your views on forgiveness. And immediately, I heard the sound of a herald, and he said, The second decree of creation, is that, all the doings of creation, and all the affairs of salvation of man, must be done by man, through the power of the intervention of their agency. And I knew, of course, that this included the man that Anokhized became. And this great decree, signaled, that in this way, Anokhized, and man, would work together. And upon hearing this decree cited, it could only mean that forgiveness was something governed by this decree. And I said, Lord, what do all the affairs of salvation have to do with forgiveness? And the Lord said, Salvation is when forgiveness removes the effects of sin, in the midst of the continuing consequences of sin. So that the children of my Father can know Him, in the midst of the temporal world. And when people need to be forgiven. There is something about them, that is unlike my Father. And because of this, they feel distant from Him. And the removal of the effects of sin, brings them to stand clean before him once again. And thus, reproval, is meant to bring repentance. And repentance, will bring forgiveness. And forgiveness, will restore, and refresh, and cleanse hearts and souls back into an awareness of the presence of a no keys. And when you are forgiven, the effects of your sin are removed from your life. And when you forgive others, the effects of their sin, are removed from your life. And when you ask me to forgive someone, the effects of their sin are removed from their lives, for
for that specific incident. And it came to pass, that upon hearing this, the teachings of Matzah the Lamb which he taught, when he was in the flesh, immediately became clear to me. And our willingness to forgive, is the answer to it all. And we in this way, can be the true children of our Father Anokhized. For by our willingness to forgive, we can truly love our enemies, and we can bless those that curse us, and we can effectively pray for those who despitefully use us, and persecute us. And with this truth, I began to glimpse a part of Anokhized, I had never before considered. And the Lord continued, and He said, There are times, when the consequences of sin, which, always remain to some degree will, in severe cases, overshadow my ability to remove the effects of your sin in your life. This happened with Kava after she left Eden. And in those times, you must manage the effects of sin. And it was for this reason, that I instructed Yat's God, not to allow Arum back into their dwelling place. And this was because, I knew that the effects of the sins of Motsor the decadent could preside over them in Eden. And when the effects of sin preside in your life, and loom large before you, in spite of all your efforts in repentance, then you must cause a distance to come between you, and the cause, of these effects in whatever manner is necessary. And understand, that it is common for people to be forgiven, and yet, not feel forgiven. And among the wicked feeling guilty, and ashamed, and unforgiven, becomes a way of life. But among the righteous, those who are born again, often walk with a sure knowledge of being forgiven. And their patterns of sinning, and being forgiven, are short, and become less and less frequent in their lives. This is how it was for Yat's God and Kava. But, when they sinned, their world began to become temporal. And for Kava, all of the relationships enjoining that came about through her dominion in Eden, began to change before her eyes. And those changes were the consequences that filled her soul, and her world. And her dominion in Eden seemed lost to her, because, all her relationships in creation had changed in her sight. And those consequences presided over her until the time when she came in her obedience, to dance at the rock of Ariel. And in those moments, she felt forgiven, and was born again. But for Yat's God, that which his dominion accomplished in Eden, remained. And his, not feeling, forgiven, remained upon him only, until Anokhized gave him possessions, with the stones that he found that were prepared for cutting. And in those moments, he was born again. And the effects of his sin, did not preside over him very long. And his dominion, was able to carry over into the temporal world, because the definition in creation remained the same before his eyes, even in the temporal world. And he too was obedient. That he should never strike one stone upon another in order to obtain stones prepared for cutting. And in both their cases, obedience in repentance, brought a knowledge of forgiveness. And the knowledge of forgiveness, issues forth primarily out of the spirits of life, that Matzah put into the elements of the temporal world, that we call the Irkod Shoy. And the stones of the earth brought Yat's God word. And he listened. And it will be remembered that for Kava. Her primary concern, was the consequences of her sin, that were upon her little son in their journey, as a mother, and child. For in her heart, she desired above all things, to raise him up in purity, and happiness, in the same manner in which she was raised by Anokhiz, in Eden. And the consequence of her sin, for her, was that now, the world had become temporal. And the effect of her sin, was that she felt, that now, the world had changed, and she could not be a successful mother. And the effect on her little son, was that, he felt that his mother wanted to give him away. And because this happened in Eden, where sin has no restraints, the effect on Kenna influenced him all his days, he being the only man born in Eden. And for this reason, I have a special measure of grace for him. Now this concern, as to how she would raise him up, rested upon her, ever since the serpent Arum had spoken subtleties to her. And it remained in her heart for many days, until she heard the Lord say, 
that he would measure out a measure of grace, for her little son Kenna. And when she heard this, even though the consequences of her sin remained the effects of it, were lifted off her, and she raised up feeling forgiven, and clean. And Rachatzel the grass, spoke to her heart of that cleanness, and forgiveness. And her joining with the spirit of life in the grass, was restored to her heart. And thus, the effects of her sin were removed in the midst of the continuing consequences. And she felt her dominion return again. And because of forgiveness, she now was confident she could be an adequate mother. And she felt her walk with Anokis restored to her. And it could be said, that she became alive to the spirits of life in the temporal world, that give life to creation. And for all of us, in the temporal world, this in fact, is what it means to be born again. Every little child is born with an innate awareness of a no-keased, in the natural world of Eden. To be born again, is to regain this awareness, and be joined with the spirits of life, Matza gave the elements of the temporal world of his creation. And remember that, the most important spirits of life in the temporal world, are the spirits that give life to your fellows your companions your neighbors, and your children. And be aware that forgiveness, does not apply to the elements of the earth both, because, the ear code choi cannot sin, and the decadar choi, cannot be forgiven. But it is the very source of life between all the children of a no keased. And remember the definition of unclean, is when your natural flow with a no keased is interrupted. And there is a unique form of uncleanness, which is founded upon low self-esteem. And this type of uncleanness, cannot be cleansed with water, or ceremony, or the elements of the earth. But, must be cleansed by obedience, and repentance, and by humbly accepting forgiveness. And repentance gives birth to forgiveness. And obedience begets repentance. And humility, and love, bring obedience. Therefore, it is the desire of the forces of evil, to bring hatefulness, and stubbornness of heart, to block love, and obedience. And in this way, it may impede the process of forgiveness, in the inception of it. And thus, the evil one threatens the salvation of mankind. And it was die obedience of Kava, to dance at the rock of Ariel, that brought her, the awareness that she had been forgiven. And she was made clean, to feel her walk with Anokised once again. And the presence, and the temptations of Motsur the decadent, were overcome even though he was there to accuse her, and lie to her, to say that Matza had come to reprimand her specifically, for dancing unworthily. And in this way, he accused her, and attacked the very obedience that brought her a knowledge of being forgiven. And it is the desired way of evil, to firmly implant the effects of sin in all the peoples of the earth. And the evil one, is thus, an enemy both of forgiveness, and the Holy One who has it to bring. And in this way, the wicked do not know a no keased, or the man that he became, and they are alienated completely from all the spirits of life, Matza put into the elements of creation. Unclean, unclean, shall they be, when they enter in, to be standing before him to be judged, in his love. And the decadent one delights in the effects of sin that multiplies, and expands in the hearts of the children of Anokised, in each succeeding generation. And it is his desire that the effects of sin, remain forever, in every soul. To preside over every aspect of their lives. And he is the accuser of all men. And accusations are his primary way of fastening the effects of sin permanently to your soul. And accusations are designed, by definition, to build an inner resistance to repentance, and they foster the pattern of justifying sin, in an effort to be rid of accusations feeling legitimate. And in this way, it is accusations that always precede pride. And because of this, accusations are the first line of attack, and his most formidable device to impede salvation. Therefore, Motsur the decadent one, came to be named Satan, which name means, the accuser. And as I pondered all these things, I found that the kind of faith that arises out of profound humility, can render accusations, powerless over us. And because of humility, 
accusations cannot penetrate the love, and compassion to forgive. That comes to us by our matzah the lamb. And it came to pass, as I sat before the Urim to look, the Lord continued to speak marvelous words to me. And he said, Among the righteous, who are gathered together in their living, or worship almost all forgiveness, should be done in advance of the sin, so that, when an offense, or sin occurs, it comes in the midst of the strong spirit of forgiveness. And the effects of the sin, do not have to be felt and grow, until, forgiveness can be found. For among holy people, the uncleanness of feeling the effects of sin, needs to be met with forgiveness and repentance, in reserve, so that the righteous cannot offend one another, and the effects of their sin, in their hearts, cannot be expanded, and implanted by accusations. And in this way, the righteous can avoid the misfortune, of going over in their minds, that which could be seen, to justify their sin. And you will see that among the wicked, there are many who will take the side of, Mozart the decadent to accuse. And those accusations will cut off repentance, and lead to vengeance, and hatred, and the discord of separation, and alienation from one another. Therefore, I have always told you to assume the best about one another. And when sin occurs, excuse your fellow, and gather more information. And you are not to accuse one another, but, reprove with loving kindness, and bring understanding in the midst of trials and error. And you are to speak to the one who is involved in the error, first except for clarification, because when you speak to another about the sin of another, you lay the foundation for the resistance to forgiveness in the one being spoken about. And you magnify, opportunities for accusations. And it is common for a person, when they know everyone is speaking of their error, to feel compelled, all the more to justify their actions, rather than repent, and feel forgiven. And the adversary finds great delight, when people assist him in this way. And the evil one, tries to influence people. To interpret any form of criticism to be an accusation, thus, promoting his influence. But when reproval is preceded by forgiveness, his designs come to naught. Speaking ill of your fellow builds a bond, between the effect of the sin, and the hearts and minds of those who have sinned. But humility builds bonds of love, and fellowship. For this reason, through all the ages of the earth, I have sought to establish these two virtues, to not speak ill, and to assume the best. And the willingness to forgive, gives rise to these two virtues. Thus, I counseled to forgive your fellow, seventy times seven. And it came to pass, that we were enlightened to learn all this new understanding regarding forgiveness. But I still wondered, how the second decree of creation, defined our role as people in the salvation process. And the Spirit of the Lord, was before me in the Urim, and he said. When I was in the flesh, I could fully abide the second decree myself. And being a man of flesh, I could readily forgive with nothing to inhibit me. And I forgave whenever the desire to repent presented itself. And I instructed all, to fully forgive without measure. But during those times, in the earth, when I am not in the flesh, the people of the right hand of my Father must carry for me, and with me, collectively and individually. The full measure of the Spirit of Forgiveness, that I always carry in my heart. And it is plain to me, in my own heart as I ponder now, His words, that which I have witnessed with the appeal of the Lord, to Ada, to forgive was for her, to embrace fully the Spirit of Forgiveness, that is carried by her Saviour Matzah the Lamb, and to embrace it together with Him. And when she went to the land of Toa, she took with her the fullest expression of Matzah the Lamb, which she used to forgive. And it was a heavenly expression that exceeded anything mankind had felt, since they left Eden. And you will see, that through her children, that rich spirit of compassionate forgiveness, entered into the midst of Qatar with lasting, and profound effect. And it can be said, that this woman, affected the entire course of the pathway of mankind. And she did it, in concert with the man that Anokis became. And the Lord continued, and he said, When you find yourself, unable to be rid of the effects of the sins of others, 
first forgive them, and enter into deep humility, and repentance, and seek to identify a significant point that is affecting you. And when you strike upon the issue that binds you to the effects of their sin, pray for them, real and ardent prayers of blessing. And ask me to forgive them. And seek any repentance, you may have in the matter, and rejoice in my healing presence. And in this way, you will be clean, and their blessings will follow them. And you will find that the spirit of forgiveness, will come to preside in your heart, and you will walk with me wholly without blemish. Now understand, that because Anokis declared that, he would come himself as a man of flesh, to rescue his children, our Redeemer is a man of flesh, like unto us, in every way, except, that he did not sin, no, not one sin. And this was brought about. Because Anokis lamented for us, because of sin. And unless we could be rescued by his forgiveness, to find salvation, he would be bereft of all his children. So, when you have compassion like matzah, and have it together with him for others, and you forgive them, or when you feel forgiven yourself, you are also removing the effects of that sin in the grieving heart, of the holy great one Anokist himself. And his sorrow is brought to joy. And his longings, are brought to comfort. And his traveling companions, are restored to him. And thus, we see that forgiveness stretches, to fill the width and breadth of creation, even, unto the infinite expanse of Elda. And I know, that rich compassion issues forth, from the heart of Matzah the Lamb. And our hearts can be like his, for he always understands the causes of sin, and all that work to encourage sin in any person. And he knows the truth, and how to apply it to every heart with loving kindness, in view of their humble, and repentant hearts. And when we carry with us, his spirit of forgiveness, we can understand also, and we too can apply the truth that comes to us by his Spirit, to bless, and heal our fellows. And be it known, that Matza ministers to the effects of sin, but he challenges their causes. And we, each one, must challenge them too. And it came to pass, that I began again. To view the doings of Lamech. And I saw that he travelled on for many days westward, to enter the rolling hills on the south of the Shaman Sea. And when he appeared, Zillah was angry, that he brought Ada, to their dwelling, place for she was unkempt, and sour, and dowdy, and Ada was young, and radiant, and pretty. And Lamech caused Ada to live in a little encampment apart. And it was nestled along a creek, in the hills. But Zillah dwelt with her husband Lamech, upon the hilltop, so they could survey the land round about. And the young men who followed with Lamech, he being a master of Sayo, watched Ada, and in the beginning sometimes, brought her provisions. And from a hill to the northwest of her encampment, Ada could view the heights of the regions of Qatar, where she was born. And it came to pass, that Ada was lonesome for her husband Nam. And she did not know how long she would remain to dwell in this place. And when she delivered her first child, it was a girl. And she named her child, Nara, which is to name her after her husband Nam. And Lamech did not know the name of her husband, nor did he ever hear the name of Nama. And because, Ada forgave him, she was not bitter, nor, did she complain in her heart, even though she suffered many distresses. And with the blessing of living apart, she was able to raise her daughter in holiness of heart, with no guile, or thought of vengeance. But she was charitable and lived each day with an innocence of heart. And the strong presence of the Lord, comforted them in times of need. And Nama grew in grace before the Lord. And Ada, secretly raised her up in a knowledge of righteousness. And after those days, Ada conceived again. And she brought forth twin sons. Who looked very much alike. And she named one Jabal, and the other Jubal and she loved them with much tenderness of heart. Now when I look at Ada, it is hard to describe what I see in her. She is little, and firmly built, and robust. And she is held captive, by a vile and evil man, who is large and hairy. And he chews on something that causes him to drool in his whiskers. 
and she has many moments of hardship. But I see in her, a woman who in her private moments with her children, is amazingly in charge of her life. And while Lamech is the father of her children instead of her husband, it has no effect upon her love for her children. And nothing can seem to distract her from her ability to shield them from bitterness and fear. And Lamech goes for long periods without ever being seen. And yet, as her children grow, they can still know the true character of Lamech. And it came to pass, that in the third year after her sons were born, Lamech took Ad away for a few days, and he wrought upon her his evil designs, which Azazel had taught him, and she conceived a Nephilim child. And it was the first such child to be born upon the earth. And from birth, the spirits of the Decadarchoi, filled the child. And the infant was vile to behold. And upon seeing the child, Ada was sore distressed, and she cried out to the Lord, and said, O, oh, Matzah, how long must I endure? And she wanted to die, and the Lord said to her, My daughter, endure a little while longer, for I am here to comfort you. And he knew the full meaning, of that which she was doing for him, and great shall be her reward in heaven. And it was Zillah, who acted as midwife at the birth, and she took delight in the child. And she took it, to raise up. And she was very jealous that Ada, was the one to bear a Nephilim child. And she inquired much of Ada to learn, that which Lamech had done, to bring forth such a child. And Ada told her everything. And it came to pass, after those days, that Nama nourished her mother back to health. And the Lord came in person to visit her. And his presence brought cleansing to her soul. And it came to pass, that one day, Lamech came upon Zillah, when she was inquiring concerning the manner, that was used to bring forth the Nephilim child, whose spirit was the son of the Decadar Choi. And he was alarmed that his secret acts should be made known. And upon learning this, he caused that Zillah should also be made to dwell in an encampment, removed away from him together with her children. And he caused his young men to watch her. And, it was in this way, that he kept his secret acts, safe with the young men who followed with him, for he had caused them to enter with him into the ways of darkness. And they made oaths of secrecy, that were made strong by threats of self-infliction. And it came to pass, that much of his time was needed to restrain the child. And in those days, Lamech began to be sore pressed by the other masters of Seku, because his secrets had become known. And he was obliged to fish, and hunt by night, because he was afraid to be seen openly upon the seashore, or on the open plain. And, Ada hardly ever saw him. And it came to pass, that Jubal and Jabal grew before the Lord, and they became very fast runners. And they too, were raised up to be holy by the wondrous strength of forgiveness, and charity in their mother. And Ada conceived again, and she gave birth to another daughter, and an account of her birth shall be given hereafter. And she named her new daughter Iona, because it was made known to her, that this daughter, would not follow the testimonies of her fathers, but would find in her life a vibrant zeal in her love for the Lord. And the attention of Lamech, was consumed by his conflicts with the wicked, and the demands of the Nephilim child. And he would look this way, and that way. And he would be afraid of shadows, and he was like a fugitive on the run, to escape his enemies. And he began to grow thin, and haggard. And move about with desperation. And it came to pass, in the twelfth year of Iona, that the Lord visited Ada in the night, and he told her that the time for her deliverance was near. And he told her that, Lamech was coming, and that he had slain his Nephilim son who was in his fourteenth year in the heat of his anger with a knife, and with the violence of the shedding of blood. And the Lord told her that Lamech would seek the lives of her children. And he said, You must hurry, and get them up, and send them westward. And I will lead them to find your grandfather Rishuya. And be of a strong hope, for I will save your children and you will see them again. And this is a wise purpose in me. And, you are highly favored in the sight of a no for you have done all things faithfully, that I have asked of you. 
and greater obedience has not been known in all the land. And it came to pass, that Adam made haste, and she awoke her children. And she gave them some few provisions, and told them all the Lord had said. And she told them, The Lord would guide them in the way. And I sat amazed before the Urim, to see her four children depart westward in the night. And I could somehow sense, that her entire contribution to assist Matzah the Lamb, in his task, lay in the lives of those children. And, Ada told them, to find the pool of heaven, for the people there would know where to find Rishuya. And she had told them many times, that the pool of heaven could remove all manner of uncleanness. And, it was very much a wonderment to me, that she did not think to go with them. But she trusted every word of the Lord to her, and he did not tell her to go. So, she awaited the arrival of Lamech, satisfied that her children were to be delivered. And in the darkness, they set out on their journey toward the land of Qatar. And I saw that in the dimness of the morning light, they looked back at their encampment from a hilltop, and they saw Lamech come, and take their mother away. And he searched in vain with many cursings, to find her children. And he set the camp alight to burn it all. And with the full light of day, he traveled eastward with Ada. And when he came to the borders of Onik, he covered her eyes to prevent her knowing how to come back. And I felt in my heart, that he could not bring himself to kill her, for she had always been quietly composed, and polite around him. But Zilla threatened him often, with disdain. And I beheld, that all this had come upon Lamech, because Zilla had spread abroad the news of the exact manner of how Lamech had begotten a Nephilim son. And Lamech was seen by the other masters of Seku, to be a man of dishonor. Because he had allowed his secrets to become known. And they pursued him with their acts of darkness. And it came to pass, that Lamech left Ada bound in an empty field, with her eyes covered. And he departed away in haste, and with much fear and he hoped no one would ever find her. But, in the first light of day, she heard someone call her name. And it was Nam. And she cried out in answer. And when she heard it was Nam, the joy of her delivery could not be constrained. And they gazed upon one another, and they saw that they had grown a little older now. And their hearts were one. And their embrace, entered into Elda. And Nam was guided by the Lord, and he brought her home at last. And I knew that he had traveled many days to get there. And certainly, he had dreamed of how to find her, before the day the Lord visited Ada. And the Spirit guided him so clearly, that he arrived at the empty field, which, was in a vast land just after Lamech departed. And they traveled in their joy together, toward the encampments of Nod. And they were received there with much to do and she rested in the encampments of the elect. And after these things, word came to the masters of Seku, that Ada was now in the regions of their dreaded Mount Mahuja. And all the masters of Seku, began to hunt Lamech with renewed intent, for they considered the inhabitants of the borders of Mahuja to be their enemies. And all they could suppose was, that Lamech had blundered into strengthening their enemies. And they feared greatly, that their secrets would be made known to them, albeit, they did not know that the righteous took no mind to do acts done in darkness. And none of the righteous sought to find advantage over any of their fellows, or anyone who lived abroad in the earth. And, the wicked considered her delivery, to arise from strong mystical powers, for they assumed everyone was just like themselves. And the land of the hills, south of the Shaman Sea, where Lamech dwelt, was called Elam, because he wanted to be hidden, and distant from those who pursued him. And because of all these things, Lamech abandoned Zillah. And she and her children were destitute. And Lamech fled into the regions of Helia to escape, and hide from his many enemies. And he was a fugitive. But, the masters of Seku greatly desired to obtain the knowledge that Zillah held. And it came to pass, that I saw a despicable thing, I saw the father, of the father of Lamech, who is called Mahujael. Which means, smitten of God. 
and he took her in. And Zillah taught him all the doings of evil. And in time she bore for him another Nephilim child, and it was a girl. And soon, it was openly known, how it was done. And in this way, the great Nephilim wars, began in all the regions of Helia. During the time, just preceding the flood, and children who were brought forth in their conception to hold, the spirits of the Decadar Choi, infested the land. And violence was everywhere. And the inhabitants of Helia were filled with fear, and dread. And the hand of every man, was against his neighbor. And die wicked used the element, of their own souls to hurt, and kill, and destroy. And it is known in heaven, that this is the greatest evil of all wickedness, when human beings, use their own bodies, as weapons of destruction. And it can be said, that this great evil, precipitated or brought forth the flood, unto the destruction of all those in the regions of Helia. And I say to you, that this great, and horrendous evil, will show its ugly face, in the end of days. And I saw, that Zillah and Mahujael were both smitten, with a loathsome disease, and they passed away in agony. And their Nephilim child ran amok. And, the people beheld that a monster, was running loose in the land. And Anokis mourned at what was becoming of the handiwork of his love. And it came to pass, that after viewing all of this sadness, I once again began to view the children of Ada. And I saw that they traveled steadfastly toward Qatar. And the mountains were always in their view. And they followed, a band of hills, south of the sea. And as they approached the western side of the sea, they turned north. And got themselves high up, to overlook the Pishon Valley, and the sea. And as they surveyed the vast expanse of the valley, they felt despair to be able to find the pool of heaven. And at this time, they had run out of provisions. And they could look down, and see that there were people living there, who made the smoke of fires. And they held back, because they did not know, if the society of Seku, was there and they were hungry, and tired, and afraid. But, Nama comforted them, and reminded them that the Lord said, that he would guide them in the way. And when she espied a cavity in a rock, they went in to hide themselves in it, and to think of what to do. And by, and by, Iona wept, for she was hungry. And the boys ventured out to find water, and provisions. And it came to pass, that they were found, by an old man and woman, who were picking berries. And they tried to hide, but the old people came to them. And as they beheld the lads, they saw they were dressed in a strange manner. And the old man sat himself down quietly for a while, and his wife sat a little way off by herself. And upon seeing these the boys, showed themselves more openly. And the old man approached them gently, and said, Where are you from? And the brothers did not answer. And he asked, Who are you seeking? And Jubal said, We are seeking one called Rishuya, who is the grandfather of our mother, who is called Aku. And upon hearing this the old woman came forward, and she exclaimed with delight, He is my brother. And they all fell into the arms of one another. And tears fell for the joy of it. And. Finally the woman said. Let us go, for we will take you to Rishuya. And Jubal said. No, for we must go, and get our sisters. And they ran back to get them. And upon entering the cavity of the rock, they exclaimed, We have found Rishuya, come, and see. And when they came, the old couple fed them, and they spoke softly together, and passed the night together in the cave. And on the morrow, they all set out together, toward the encampment of Rishuya, near the pool of heaven. And they were received with much rejoicing. And, the village was on the banks of the stream that flowed from the pool of heaven. And, they beheld the wonder of the pool. And, they knelt, and blessed Anokised, and washed themselves in the lustral waters unto a newness of life. And the name of the old woman was, Yasha, for her vision was to rescue the children of the righteous. 
and she taught many things at the pool of heaven to call people to walk in the true pathway. And, she was childless all her days. So, it was determined that she would care for the children of Ada. And her life had a new meaning for her in her old age, and she was filled with delight. And she told an account, of how they came to be picking berries so far away, from their encampment, for the Lord had urged upon her husband to travel a far distance, in his old age. And they supposed it was to discover some wonderful new place to find provision. But now, they could see that Matzah had led them there. And the children found their grandmother Aku, who their mother was named after. And they all were joined in the bonds of love. And it came to pass, that the children were content to learn all they could be taught. And they were unaccustomed to living with so many people. And, they learned concerning the birthplace of their mother. And, they were shown where she lived, until, Azri her father, took his family into the northern regions of Onak, by the islands of the Aral Sea. And the children became bound in their souls, to all of their relatives in Qatar. And it came to pass, that the twins grew in stature before the Lord. And they diligently studied the guidance tablet of Anokhizd and, the children visited Conan, and Shamar often at the pool of heaven. And Jubal found that Conan did a very curious thing. He had fashioned a horn of an owl, in such a way, that he could blow in it. And make a deep and penetrating sound, and, he said, that when the sun shone through a cleavage of a certain rock, it was the first day, of the new year. And each year, Conan, would blow his horn loud, and long on the sunrise of that day. And he said, it was to announce the new year to all creation. And when Jubal heard it, he was moved by the sound to the center of his soul. And he immediately sought the Lord concerning that which he had felt. And the Lord spoke gently to him, by the power of his spirit. And Jubal inquired of Conan, just how it was made? And he asked, what it meant for it to be blown. And Conan said, that all the world of creation must be instructed, that a new cycle of life had begun. And it came to pass, that Jubal was very intent to learn of these things. And he determined, that he would set himself apart for a while, in order to inquire of the Lord concerning the matter. And he went to the pool of heaven, so he could purify, and fast, and pray. And he inquired of the Lord concerning all that he had felt with the blowing of the horn. And the Lord instructed him, for some days as to things related to the horn. And the Lord said, The horn when it is fashioned, so you can blow upon it, is called a trump. And it is a signal horn, that all the spirits of life and creation, will hear. And all the ear code shoy, will give heed to the sound of it. And in this way, they can be summoned, and assembled to be instructed, concerning all the desires of a no keyed in all things. And Jubal determined to go to Rishuya, and tell him all that he had found out by the richness of the presence of the Spirit at the pool of heaven. And upon hearing this, Rishuya went out alone to seek the wisdom of the Lord. And after some days, when he returned, he came and visited with Jubal. And he counseled him, that according to the guidances of Anokhizd, the people are to purify themselves by sevens in all things. And it had recently come to Rishuya, from a man who had been traveling in Anak, that Enoch had divided the days of men, according to the desires of Anokhizd. And he was instructed in all things, regarding the exact manner in which it was done. And upon hearing of the doings of Conan, Rishuya advised Jubal, to use the trump to instruct, and remind the Irkod Shoy in all these things, so that the people could better purify themselves by sevens. And it came to pass, that Jubal began to blow the trump every fifty days, at the end of every seven weeks. And, he also would blow it upon a high place, when the Lord had need for the ear code shoy to be instructed. Now word had spread abroad, that the father of Baraka had established the use of the trump. And Enoch thereafter used it, to divide the sons of men. And it is known that Jubal had been diligent before the Lord in all this matter. And accordingly, it became the custom to call seven weeks of days, 
and seven weeks of years of jubilee. And the word jubilee means, to be like jubal. And thus, were the twins known abroad. And they were joined in their souls in their service to Anokeezd. And I began to learn an interesting thing. Jabal and Jubal were like all the people in Qatar, for they were prone to travel across the land with speed swiftly. And they had no hesitation to go great distances in the things they sought. And, they could blend into the ear code shoy. So, they could make themselves hard to discover. And this seemed to be the way for many of the men of Qatar. But the people of Onik, were sedentary, and they were satisfied to remain close to their encampments. And they fished. And grew plants to eat, and hunted only close by in certain seasons for birds, who frequented the waters. And they gathered a seeb, during the proper season. And they were not known to be wide travelers. But they were content to tend their sheep in their quiet life. But the men of Qatar were strong hunters. Who ranged far, and wide. And as I thought upon these things, I began to understand, that the Lord had brought Enoch to Anak, from among this people. And his accomplishments for the Lord were made possible, because he was a traveler. And his entire influence to bring divisions upon the earth, came from the culture. That had, sprang forth, from the influence of the pool of heaven. And Veraka, his mother, was even named after the pool and had come from the same influence of the pool of heaven. And I think, that for this reason, Enoch was often looked upon as an outsider by the people of Anak. And it came to pass, that Jabal also, became a hunter. And he became determined, that he would go to the land of Maladath to find sheep, for those of his settlement, and for Yasha, who he called mother. And in the early spring, he and Jubal, set themselves out toward Mount Mahuja. And along the way they met some strangers, who pointed out the way to the encampments of Nod. And when they arrived, they slept the night at the place of water. And in the morning, a young girl came, to water her sheep. And she saw them, and she knew by their dress, that they were Kateris. And she greeted them kindly, and she asked, Which encampment are you from? And they said, We are from the encampment of Rishuya, and Aku. And the girl said, There is one here, who is named Aku. And the boys looked at one another with surprise, as they had not known anything, regarding what had become of their mother. And Jubal said quietly, What if it is our mother? And they asked, Can you go and tell her, that we would like to speak with her? And the maiden hailed a lad, and I asked him to, go, and tell Nam, and Aku, that some travelers from Qatar, of the encampment of Rishuya, wanted to speak with them. And by, and by, they were led to the lair of Nam, and Aku. And they sat themselves down, a little way off. And waited quietly. And when Aku beheld them, she could not restrain herself, and she did not wait according to the custom, but rushed out to them and their meeting was sweet indeed. And they fell into the arms of one another with tears of joy. And all were overcome with happiness. The twin brothers had found their mother, and a mother her sons. And Nam greeted them as his sons, and he loved them. And to them Nam had a familiar spirit, and they called him father. And all the news was spread throughout the encampment of Nod. And Anokis was well pleased at the fruit that, forgiveness bore. And Ada was seen in heaven, as one of the great ones, of the earth. And the measure of grace meted out to Kenna was sweet indeed. And it came to pass, that the boys stayed the winter in Nod. And they loved Yat's God, and Kava. And their souls were enlarged, by the sweet spirits, of the parents all the living. And a rich understanding of life, entered into them to be exposed to the influence, and teaching of their ancient parents. And they were delighted to learn all Enoch had done, in naming the sons of heaven. And, they felt they could not learn enough. And, they inquired diligently, concerning the divisions of Elda, 
and of the establishment of Yod in Moin. And the heart of their mother was brought to comfort, and she carefully instructed her sons regarding how they were to find their rightful ribs, and they bonded with all their kindred in the family of Nam, and listeners taught them the teachings of Enoch, and Jabal hunted to give them gifts for their teachings, and from Nam they learned that their grandparents Azri and Shemanadab lived in the northern regions of Anak, by the islands of the Aral Sea. And when they departed to return to Qatar, in the springtime, with their sheep, they went through those regions to visit their grandparents. And Jubal and Jabal were greeted with kindness. And they comforted their old grandparents, with the news of their lives in Qatar, for Azri and Shemanadab were raised up in Qatar and listened with great interest, at the goings-on there. And it came to pass, that these two young men, brought a knowledge, of Yod, back to Qatar. And Jubal was foremost to teach the knowledge brought by Enoch, at the pool of heaven. And the rich spirit of forgiveness in their mother resonated in their hearts. And Jubal taught the meaning of forgiveness. And, the people openly embraced it and the testimony of the deliverance of Ada, was spread abroad, and the influence, of the virtue of forgiveness, was felt throughout all the borders of the land, for as the wicked spread themselves in the areas surrounding Qatar, instead of hostility, they were met with kindness, and hospitality, and some hearts were drawn toward a knowledge of Anokis, but most looked upon any kindness with suspicion, and thus, the spirit of Ada, influenced Qatar, through her sons, even though she did not return there. And by her innocence of heart, the power of forgiveness swept over the people there, to forever influence the lives of men, even beyond the great flood. And Ada, joined mankind to the spurt of forgiveness. And she is the second grandmother, Matza used in his task. Now, down this line of women, combined with the righteousness of men, the Lord used women to bring the righteousness of Kava, to Qatar. And men, could not do it, for it was established by a woman. And it seemed, with Kava, that forgiveness, was infinite. And this is what the Lord used, to establish Shabuwa, in the land of Qatar. And he had to use it over, and over again, and it had to be brought by agency. And not only, did Ada have to forgive Lamech, for stealing her away, but she had to forgive him, for causing her to bear a Nephilim child. And that forgiveness was infinite. And Iona came into the world, with that power her soul, being the element of righteousness. And great will be their reward. When the people of Ma'in returned to Eden. And after viewing all these things with Urim, I rested a while. End of chapter. Please subscribe to get updated future uploads. Thanks for listening and Shalom.